I definitely love me a Wednesday night service. We're going to be in Joshua 3 tonight, if you want to go ahead and turn in your Bibles. Joshua chapter 3, we're going to continue on this venture through the book of Joshua. I swear there's something, you know, like from Sunday to Wednesday, it kind of goes a little fast. And it's only an extra 24-hour period between Wednesday and Sunday. But that gap seems so much longer. But, like, there's no way that you could really break that up evenly, right? So I'm just saying, like, there's nothing better in the middle of the week than to get us to a good old-fashioned Wednesday night. You guys there? All right, we're just going to read verse 1 real quick here. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, I'm so thankful to be here tonight. I'm thank you for the day that you that you gave me and that you gave us all, Lord, to allow us to to be in church here. And Lord, I pray for your help to uh, that you'd fill me, that you'd be with my mind, my heart, my mouth, that that you control me now as I stand before your people and uh, and hope to say something useful to uh, to glorify you and to uh, to edify them, Lord. And Again, I'm just thankful to be here, and, uh, and I pray that you be with me now, Lord, as we get into the preaching. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so in tonight's passage, uh, and it's great because it kind of goes hand in hand with some things that we got going on right now, but in tonight's passage, we're going to see the hand of God moving to help get Israel over the Jordan River, right? And so what we're going to see is that God is willing to lead his people, and he's willing to provide, right? And he's also willing to bless them. So what I'd like to do here is take a look at our example in the passage, right? And see what we can learn from that to see God's blessing in our lives too, right? Because that's what we all want, right? Is God's blessing in our lives? There's a whole point that we're here, right? We got, we got a God above and we're nothing but men, ladies, whatever, right? <laughs> Trying to figure out how to bridge that gap, Right? How do we see the blessing of God in our lives, right? And I think we got a really good uh, example here in our passage. So the first thing I want to look at is simply just that God leads, right? And when I say that God leads, we're going to see that he gives the orders, okay? So if we'll pick up in verse 9, or, or sorry, verse 7, we're just going to read a few uh, verses here. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in the Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. Over to verse 13. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. Now, here's the thing, right? So we're in the Old Testament, so God works a little bit differently, right? In our passage here, we have God speaking directly to Joshua, okay? I wish that the Lord would audibly speak to me because I need all the help that I could get, but that doesn't mean that God doesn't still speak to us today, okay? And there's a few different ways that he does this, right? He does it through his word, okay? We got a book, and that'll help us to come to know the Lord, come to know ourselves, help us to try to bridge that gap some, right? We also have preaching, okay? And then as it was spoke about uh, to Elijah, right, while he was in the midst of chaos, really, there was a still, small voice, okay? The other two go without saying, so I just want to talk about the still, small voice just for a second. And I was trying to think, like, how do I really explain the still, small voice, okay? And so I'm going to hope to do this justice. Let's say, and maybe you've been there. I know I have, but maybe you've been there or situations like this that you're about to leave the house, right? It's a beautiful day. The forecast looks good. There's not a cloud in the sky. And you're just going to venture out for a few hours, right? You get in the car, and all of a sudden you hear, close the windows. And you're like, whatever, it's beautiful out here. And you get on down the road, and a couple hours goes by, and what happens? Can you guess? 
it starts pouring out. Still small voice. Now, when I first, I don't want to say when I first recognized the call to preach, but the first time that the Lord talked to me about it was uh, about two and a half years ago. We were at the Jubilee. The, the theme of the meeting was taking a stand. And so we were back at the place we were staying, and I was reading my Bible, and I was in, uh, I want to say it was 1 Kings 22, uh, where Hilkiah finds the book of the law. He gives it to Shaphan. Shaphan takes it to Josiah. And it says that Josiah brought it before the people, and they took a stand too. And as I like came to that, I hear, well, you could share that, couldn't you? Still small voice. Now, not every voice you hear is necessarily that still small voice, okay? Because we all talk to ourselves, right? Some of us do it audibly. <laughs> but we all talk to ourselves, right? And so what we got to learn to do is separate those two voices, right? Because sometimes it might just be the old man, right? It might just be, that's a good idea. And then you hear that still small voice say, you better not. Or, that wasn't funny, right? I'm just saying that still small voice is there. God speaks to us, right? But the great question is, are we listening, okay? So we have the Lord speaking directly to Joshua here, and we know that he's listening because he passes on this message, right? And so the thing is, is that the Lord magnifies Joshua, it says, right? And it's because he's speaking God's words, okay? So... In a sense, Joshua is the preacher, right? And so I stand before you, right? Uh, and, and as the preacher, right, is, is, wasn't it the preaching that led us to salvation, right? Wasn't it that helped guide you there to help give you that understanding, right? So it's not so much about the preacher, right? It's not about the man, per se. It's the, it's the recognition to the weight of the words, right? The words of God, right? And so... As, 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 you, as you think about this whole God speaking to us, right? In the passage, God speaking directly to Joshua who takes it to somebody else. But I will say that sometimes some of the things that we get might not come through his word. It might not come through the preaching. It might not come through that still small voice. Sometimes it might just come from some random person. Um, recently. I've been, I try not to talk about myself too much in, in certain avenues, but uh, I'll share with you for sake of the message, right? Because sometimes a message might come from somebody else, maybe just somebody at work. Um, I've been dealing with a, a little bit of a hardship, and, uh, and I'm very invested into my job, right? My job is, is the sort of thing that I'm never really off the hook, right? There's Thanksgiving and Christmas, the stores are closed, and that's about as close to off the hook as I get, right? It's those two days a year. And so it's fine. It's, I'm so used to it. I've, I've been in my industry for over 20 years now. I'm 40, 27 years I've been doing what I do for a living, right? And so maybe not the same position. But anyway, I've been spinning my wheels and spinning my wheels and spinning my wheels and spinning my wheels, and in certain avenues, I guess I'll just say it, right, for sake of the message. Our, 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 our personal finances have been under attack, okay? And, and we're doing okay. The Lord is sustaining us. That's not what I'm trying to get at. But when you're dedicating all your time, right, to, to keeping this thing afloat, right, and spinning your wheels and spinning your wheels and spinning your wheels, right, it can be discouraging, okay? And so I was having a conversation with a guy that is above me in the chain of command, right? But we're partners, so to speak, um, was telling me, and this is a lost guy, right? He's not quoting scripture. And he turns around and he says, he's like, well, think about your ministry, Jesse. You got a, a rare opportunity to make an effect in people's lives. And in my head, I'm like, my ministry? What are you talking about? I'm a pizza guy, you know? Well, this is a lost guy. And I've witnessed to him a bunch of times. I hope he makes it here at some point. My ministry, right? And so what's weird about that is I walked back inside. I, was, I had just gotten to work, took the phone call. I walked back inside, 
And I'm working that day with a, a guy that's a few years older than me, lost his wife a few years ago. Uh, she was saved, he's saved. And he started talking Bible to me. And the next thing, and he's talking about his wife, and he gets all choked up. And we had like this little back and forth, and I thought about, wow, I was just able to be a comfort and a blessing to this guy, right? A couple hours pass, and a couple employees come in. And one of them recently got saved through conversations at work. And they had went home and took the advice and got on their knees and sought the Lord and so on and so forth. And without me, me prying, the next day I know we're talking scripture and I'm trying to encourage this person to learn. And it's like, wow, my ministry. And then the very next day I'm at a different store and a guy that, that I haven't known too long is telling me that he, he gave himself to, to Jesus Christ. He doesn't really know a lot of, of scripture at all, really. He doesn't even necessarily know which book to stand on. I'm talking about that with him and so on and so forth. And I kept going back to my ministry, right? Weird, right? But tell me that wasn't the Lord like, hey, man, you might be having a hard time right now, but I'm sustaining you, and he is. And by the way, you got a little ministry going over here while you're doing this thing that's helping some other people. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that God, God speaks to us, right? right? So now here's the thing. If he's going to be speaking to us, right, we got God up there that we're trying to bridge this gap. And if he's going to speak to us, we should probably be willing to follow, right? So let's look back at our passage. Start back at verse 1 real quick. And Joshua rose early in the morning... And they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel lodged there before they passed over. Down to verse 3. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then ye shall move, remove from your place and go after it. Excuse me. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. Heretofore, up until now, right? And so Joshua and Israel have come to the Jordan, okay? This sounds like a small thing when you're just reading this stuff, like, oh, no big deal, they just came to the Jordan. I'm here to tell you that that shows some serious obedience. Some serious obedience. I'll tell you why. Thus saith the Lord. The Lord's going to do something for us, guys. Why don't we meet downtown tomorrow, right? You know where the Detroit River is, and you can see Windsor across the way there? The Lord's going to do something for us. Let's meet tomorrow. We're just going to walk over there. We're not taking the bridge, okay? No tunnels. We're just going to get over there. The Lord's going to do something for us. Now, if you show up, it's going to require some obedience, right? And so... How are you going to get the blessing, right, God's blessing, if we're not willing to do the things that he tells us? Now, I'm not saying that God's going to tell us to meet tomorrow and go do this thing, right? We live in a different time, okay? But that is what they're up against here, right? And so now we have this space that was between, right? The great picture here. There's a space that's between, about 2,000 cubits, right? And the Ark of the Covenant in your Old Testament is a, it's a picture, it's a type of the presence of God, okay? And so we have that type that's going to go out ahead of the people, and they are to follow, okay? So God's leading, and the people are here to follow, right? Because ye have not passed this way heretofore, right? And so he's going to go ahead of us, right? Because he knows what we need, Okay? And so, again, back to your salvation. Was that not exactly what he did for you when he laid down his life to save your soul? Right? And so don't make no small thing of it. Can he not do that for you now? Does he not know what you need right now? Since I mentioned the finances, it's been a blessing that the Lord has shown up and made sure that we got what we need. There's been some things that I couldn't have put together. That have, that have really helped us, that have fit that void, that have helped us through. And just the same here as we look at this thing, that, that God's going ahead of the people, right? 
And so in the moment that said thing showed up for me, I had the ability to turn it down. Right? Somebody asked me, you want to work a side job? OK, yeah, I could do it on my day off, a few hours in the morning, no big deal. right? I could have said no. God could be trying to bless me. God could be trying to help me. right? I could have said no. But am I going to get in the way of that? right? So like if he's leading me through, he knows what I need. right? And here it is. Now, God provides, my next point. So, and by provides, I mean that he makes a way. Okay, And so now go back to verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Verse 10. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know... I said that twice just like that, because it's good to know, isn't it? Ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Wow, what a mouthful, right? That's a lot of people that he's about to drive out so he can lead them into this land, right? And so if we're going to follow his orders, right, then that also means that we must trust him to work out the details, now, if God did tell us to meet at the, Ga the Detroit River tomorrow, right, we're just going to have to trust him to work out the details. And so we see that here. Flip back, if you would, to Joshua chapter 1. Let's just kind of look at it just real quick. Joshua 1. In verse 2, it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, go over this Detroit River. No big deal, guys. Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Notice how flippant it says that, right? Arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all those people. No problem, right? They had no idea how they're going to get over there. Like, what do you mean, go over this Detroit River? What are you talking? You're talking crazy, Jesse. No, no, no. That's what the passage says. Arise and go over this Jordan. No big deal, okay? So here's the thing. This little venture, like, it took a miracle. We're looking at an all-out, full-on miracle right here that is so easy to just read right over. Now, I actually pulled some notes so we could talk about this because I truly believe when I'm witnessing and I'm talking to people, I think that there's, like, this extra hurdle that we have as Americans. We have this extra hurdle because we are so far disconnected from the places that get talked about in our Bible, yeah. right? Other side of the world, right? Yeah. So let's put this in perspective. Let's imagine that we have an Israelite with us here tonight and somebody mentions Mount Rushmore and he's like, ain't no Mount Rushmore, what are you talking? That's crazy. Some guy blew faces with dynamite in the side of granite. Like, and we're looking at him like, yeah, man, it's over in South Dakota. Like, you get there in a day and a half or so. I mean, no big deal, right? But that is kind of how it is for us as it pertains to so many sites in Israel. It's just easy for us to, like, shortchange what exactly we're talking about. So I chased down some Jordan River specs, Okay. And more importantly, what I was looking for was east of Jericho, directly east of Jericho. Now, overall, the Jordan River, overall, is 223 miles long, okay? But it meanders quite a bit. And so it's only 124 miles of actual distance. Now, looking east of Jordan, or sorry, east of Jericho, it looked like from the pictures that there was like an embankment that kind of comes down both sides to get to like a landing before you get to the actual river, okay? And so the average width is somewhere between 90 to 100 feet in that area that's directly east of Jericho. The average depth 
is somewhere between three and 10 feet, right? Now that seems like quite a difference. But the thing is, is that matters directly where you're standing by position and also to time of year and the season that it might be because it could be a wet season or a dry season and it could be during the, uh, um, like the, the, the flood season, okay? Now, if you look at verse 15 real quick, this is actually during the flood season that this is occurring. And we see that here because it says, And they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. So they just got their toes in, right? For the Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. Okay. So right now we are far beyond the averages because it's overflowing its banks all the time of harvest. So during that time of year, that 90 to 100 feet swells to a half mile in width. And your depth changes to be more like 17 feet. Okay? But even with all that being said, it's not just about the depth and the width here, right? It's about they're during the flood season and these guys crossed over on dry ground, right? Like, in other words, it's the most inopportune time of year, the most inopportune moment for the Lord to bless these people in the way that he's about to. Maybe that'll help you, right? Because it's sure been helping me recently. Now, where was I? I done lost myself. Okay, so with that in mind, we should be seeking the Lord, right, to open and close the doors in our life, right? So because he knows better than we do truly of what we need, right? He goes before us. He sits in eternity. He knows what we need before we do, right? And I mentioned things going on this week. Let's think about this. We got, I don't know what else to call him, an awesome dude, Brother Yoakum. That guy is great. If you haven't talked to him, that guy is great. He's in a wheelchair. His legs don't work. He cannot help himself as it pertains to building a laundry room, right? So him and his wife can simply get some clean clothes. A very simple thing that we all probably take for granted, right? And the next thing you know, there's a band of guys from two different areas that are on opposite sides of the country, both coming to the opposite side of the country to make sure this guy gets what he needs. I'm just saying, man, could he have planned that out, right? Could he have thought that through? Could he have put that together? I don't know. And so if you flip over to Revelation real quick, I think it kind of sheds some light to this. Revelation chapter 3. And not just thinking about our, our brother over there, but thinking about myself, right? Thinking about you. Thinking about all of us. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These things saith he that is holy. Right? There's only one that's holy. Okay? He that is true. He that hath the key of David. He that openeth, and no man shutteth. And shutteth, and no man openeth. Okay, that's some power right there, right? I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Wow, right? For thou hast little strength. Absolutely. Absolutely, I do have little strength. The longer I spend, the more I realize I have little strength. And has kept my word. Oh, Lord, I'm trying to. Absolutely, I'm trying to. I'm trying to meditate on it. I'm trying to stay grounded there as the cares and concerns of the world try to shake me. I'm trying to, Lord. 
and has not denied my name. Oh, no, sir. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And so that's just the thing, right? Have the faith to walk through the doors that the Lord opens for you, okay? And accept the doors that he closes. And matter of fact, I would challenge you to ask him to shut those doors. Ask him to, please. Please, because I will set myself up to hang. They say, what's that old saying that uh, if you give man enough rope, he'll hang himself, right? That's right. Lord, please, if this isn't meant to be, please shut this door for me, right? And this should pertain to every major decision that we might make, right? You thinking about a new job? Ask the Lord about it. Thinking about moving? Ask the Lord about it. You thinking about getting a car? Ask the Lord about it. I got engaged. I'll tell you a quick story. I got engaged because we had been in church. Neither one of us grew up in church. We had been here not quite a year yet. And I, I knew uh, the Lord had kind of, you know, like, gave me some conviction to know I got I to gotta write the house, right? And so I bought a ring. And I had no money to put on this wedding, right? But I got the ring. So what do I do? I go to the Lord, and I'm like, Lord, if, if, you're, if you're with this thing, I need you to bless it. I need you to put it together. I'm not preaching prosperity right now, by the way. But I can testify that in those moments, and my wife could tell you too, the next thing you know, these different avenues kept coming in. I got that. I got that. I got that. And by the time it was all said and done, all the finances that we didn't have, right, because we were in the hole, by the time it was all said and done, we had gotten back to a good spot. Our entire wedding was booked, and we even got to go on a few-day honeymoon. It was miraculous, right? I could not have opened that door myself. I know that much. Now, let's move on. God provides. He makes a way. And if he's going to make a way for you, right, God Almighty, if he is going to shine on you and make a way for you, then I suggest, my friend, that you're looking for it, right? Now, pick back up in verse 5. We're going to see something kind of interesting that we've seen a few times already, or at least a couple. Verse 5, And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass over before the people. Excuse me. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. Okay, slow it back down. All right? Sanctify yourselves today, right? For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And then in verse 6, we saw the presence of God show up, okay? We've seen this message before in a very different way, right? Back in uh, Genesis, you had Noah. You better get on that ark, man. You better get on that ark. You'd better get on that ark. You'd better set yourself apart. You'd better be ready because God is about to do something. Am I right? And then back over in Exodus, you move forward a little bit. And you see, Moses, you better put that blood on the doorframe. You better get that blood on the doorframe. You better get under the blood. You better do it. You better set yourself apart. You better sanctify yourself. You better do it because God's going to do something. God's about to do something, right? We, right, flash forward a few thousand years. Flash forward, that message is still here today. Sanctify yourselves. Set yourselves apart. You better be living in with the thought of the judgment seat of Christ in mind, right? You better be ready for that because Paul preached the same message. Now, the, the specifics are different. I get that, but not really. The gist of the message, not really different. Over in Titus 2.13, he said, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, Right? You better be looking for it. You better, you better recognize it could be today, right? Now, for me, right, I am looking for that. 
Lord, I, I hope I don't make it home tonight. My family is safe. Praise God. We don't even need to make it home because we will all land in the same place together. And what a blessing that is. And my wife and I, like, we could look out any random cloudy day and be like, Lord, the stage is set. Call us out, right? But I'm here to ask you tonight, right? I'm the preacher tonight. Are you ready for that? Or are you allowing yourself to be like, ah, not right now. Not right now, Lord. Let me, I shouldn't be here right now. Or I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be doing this right. Maybe later. Maybe in a couple more hours, right? Whatever it is. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that in any given moment? Or are you allowing yourself to put yourself in a mindset to, yeah, I want God's blessing, just not right now, right? Where are you sitting with that? Now, let's show that God does bless. My last point here is that God does, in fact, bless. Now, and by that, it's going to be him that does the work. And that's the important thing to notice here. Look over at verse 11. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. And it came to pass when the people were moved from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city Adam that is beside Zaratan and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed and were cut off and the people passed over right against Jericho. Now, let me just, before I move forward, I just want to point out, I thought it was super cool when I was looking into the, the Jordan stats and I was looking at pictures. I just, I just had the thought that like, the way that embankment is, like if he, even if it kind of like started to fill up and if he stopped the waters, the way it's actually like the, the earth is right there, it's like it could all be contained right there. It wouldn't even like spill over and make a mess everywhere else. Like it could actually like stop there and just fill inside this embankment. I thought it was super neat. Like, wow, it could even like stay right where it is. But anyway... God's handiwork is what stopped the waters, right? There's no denying that. There isn't going to be a man walking around that's like, oh, yeah, it's because I was here that the, the, the waters dried up, right? Like, none of that's going to happen. Brother Yoakum right now is not sitting there watching these guys do the work like, oh, yeah, it's because these are my buddies, you know, it's because of me that these guys flew across the country to do this, right? It's God's handiwork that did this, okay? And so it's Israel's obedience to the word, right? Joshua gave him the word, right? We're going to meet at the Detroit River tomorrow, guys, right? They believe that as it pertained to them in the Jordan, right? They believe it. They trusted it. It was the word of God. They showed up, right? It's their obedience that allows them to be there, right? That's all the more they're doing. They're trusting the word of God. I mean, right? Amen, right? And so if you're saved, very much the same thing. It's not because you did something, right? It's not because I did something, right? It's because Jesus Christ did something, right? All we did was believe it and trust it, right? That's it. That's the whole story, right? Our witness should simply be pointing to that, right? Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Why am I standing before you right now? Because Jesus Christ said, you can share that, can't you? Jesus Christ. That is the whole thing. I had a lost man once, one, one time ask me, he's like, well, what is it that you got that I don't have? And don't say it's Jesus Christ. And honestly, it's like, um, nothing, right? I mean, <laughs> you stumped me, guy, because you took my answer. It's, it is the only answer. It is the only answer, right? And so it's the acceptance of his work that's the key. And that was the key right here in this crossing of the Jordan, right? So Jesus Christ does the work, right? And now we'll see that the people get the blessing, okay? It's, we're getting close here. Verse 17, And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord 
stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. That's a weird phrase. That's a really weird phrase, especially as it pertains to salvation, like I've mentioned a couple times here before, right? All the people were passed clean over? Wow. Wow. What a strange way to put it, especially in a dusty land, especially when, like, the water that would have, like, cleaned them up, right? I don't think this is a hygiene thing, right? I think this is like a fresh start, right? They, they, had, they had came out of Israel. They had wandered for a long time, and now they're getting to the promised land. They're on the threshold as they cross the river, and they pass clean over. That's what Jesus Christ did for us when he saved our souls, right? Interesting. It's, it's just an interesting way to say it. Pass clean over. I'm like, wow, praise the Lord. Now, it was their obedience, right? It was their obedience to the word of God. It was the work of Jesus Christ. And it becomes Israel's blessing, right? Half mile wide river and 17 feet deep. I forgot to mention... Um, that even even when the Jordan is is in its lowest point, right? It's thought to be one of the strongest currents for a river its size. And in a moment that it obviously couldn't have been at its absolute lowest point, there was some like world-renowned swimmer that tried to get across, right? I get across there, and he couldn't do it. He got swept away. I'm just. A little bit interesting, a little factoid for you. But anyway, Israel had been wandering for 40 years, right, in the desert until they get to the spot that they're finally passing over and they're clean passed over. So I beg the question, right, how much time do we spend wandering? How much time have we been wandering away? So I'm here to ask you, what has the Lord told you to start? Right? What's he told you to stop? I, I mean, if we're thinking about what we got here in front of us, I mean, is there a blessing that we've been wandering away from? Or how about this way? If God's willing to bless you, will you let him? Right? As simply put, it was all his work. All they had to do was be obedient to the word, Right? To, to, what, to what God had told them to do. He does the work and they get the blessing, right? If God's willing to bless you, will you let him? Now, in conclusion, we've seen that God led and he provided and he blessed, okay? We're to learn from the example, right? So what did they do? They listened. God spoke and they listened. He told them what to do and they followed, Okay? And whether they knew how, right, they obeyed. So they listened, they followed, and they obeyed, right? And it wasn't anything miraculous. There was nothing really out of the ordinary for the time in which they're living. They're living at a time that God had manifested himself and done crazy things. So for me to say to you, we're going to cross the Detroit River, that's far more crazy for me to say it than it was for these guys at that time. I'm just trying to bring it home so you can understand, okay? For God to do stuff like that at this time isn't as far out there. So I'm just here to say that if I know that I'm doing what God would have me to do, then I know that I'm exactly where God would have me to be. And it's really that simple, right? And so if you're seeking the will of God for your life, nobody's asking you here to do anything crazy and outlandish and something that's beyond you, right? It's as simple as, are you listening? Are you following? And are you obeying the word of God? Do I know that I'm doing what I should do today, right? And am I seeking him for the decisions that I should make 
tomorrow. That's it. That's our message. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much. Uh,